I'm about to be joined by Jared Dillian, the author of The Daily Dirt Nap. I've been waiting to speak to Jared for well over a year. There's so many things I want to talk to him about. Uh, he's got such an interesting mind and a fantastic way of communicating. I'm warning you now, this interview could bounce around all over the place because it just he, he covers so many topics uh, and I've got so many things flashing through my head. So, so let's see what he has to say. I think that the financial media and, and myself are focused more on Canada. Be it's, there's just been more press about it and, and, and it's probably a little goofier in terms of some of the price gains, but you know, Sydney is just as goofy. Um, and also Sweden, nobody is paying any, you hardly ever hear about Sweden's housing market. Sweden's really great because all the mortgages are interest only right. and nobody ever amortizes principal. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah. So, and if you want to throw in Hong Kong and China too, you have concurrent housing bubbles at various places in the world. But, I mean, Canada's at least is a fairly easy one to play. Australia, for example, it's a really tough, people have been looking to put on a short housing market in Australia for a long time. It's not an easy thing to do. You can short the banks if you think that's the way it's gonna get, get transmitted, but there's four of them, and we know that they will be ring-fenced in any kind of panic. It's tough to short, there's no DR Horton, there's no Toll Brothers, yeah, there's none of that stuff in Australia. It, that's true. Like in the, the big short in the US was actually easy. There was a lot of stuff exactly. to short. And you know, I get the question all the time, how do you short Canada? And the first thing I say is Canadian dollar. And the second thing I say is the banks. And then everyone says, well, the banks can't go to zero because, and I'm, well, that's which is half true. We don't need um, to go to zero. That's, but that's the but look, like even the broad housing market, you know, the S&P 500 from top to bottom in the crisis went down 60%. And if you get the Canadian stock market short, right to the tune of 60% plus currency moves. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a pretty good trade. Yeah. You know, if you just want to be short the broad market and the same thing applies to Australia. 